Joining us now is infectious disease specialist, Dr. Amish Adalja. He's a senior scholar at the Johns Hopkins Center for Health Security. Uh, doctor, thank you so much for being here with us on this Sunday. Uh, my first question has to do with President Biden. So I think what everyone's wondering is in layman's terms, what does a rebound infection with Paxlovid actually mean? Are you still contagious even like in his case without symptoms? So a recon refers to people who take Paxlovid, they get better, they test negative, and then for whatever reason, they test positive again after a period of testing negative. We don't quite understand all of it. We don't even know if it's completely related to Paxlovid, but it's clearly being something uh, reported by many people. You have to assume if you test positive, however, that you are contagious. So that's why the president is isolating again. But a lot more questions and answers when it comes to this rebound phenomenon. Yeah, it feels like everything related to COVID, we're always and new territory all the time. So if someone tests positive after just having tested negative and completing their first round of isolations, does that mean they have to start isolating day one again? Or are we still just kind of like, wait till you test negative again? At that point, you really just wait till you test negative again. It's, it's still something where there's not really great consensus because we don't quite understand what's happening with rebound, how contagious those individuals are, how infectious they are, if that virus that's isolated is viable, or if it's just viral debris. I think there's a lot of questions that need to be answered. And when you look at the clinical studies, it doesn't seem to be very common, but what we're hearing anecdotally that it is more common. Yeah, and so I think one of the things that I've noticed in particular, and obviously, like you said, we don't have all the answers, but Dr. Fauci appeared to have a rebound case. Um, the president, of course, and they're both older in age. Is this something that is happening to uh, more immunocompromised people or we just really don't know the answer? It's very hard to know because the thing is we give Paxlovid to those high risk individuals. So is rebound a phenomenon that occurs in people that are older or have comorbidities and not something that happens to younger individuals? That's an important question to know because a lot of the data with Paxlovid is gonna be skewed because it's really indicated for people at high risk. So we may not be getting a full picture of this. This might be something that happens more commonly in higher risk people than lower risk people. But what's needed to be done is comprehensive studies to understand what's actually the biology behind this rebound phenomenon. Right, and something important to note is that we have seen already that Paxlovid still is working and is something that people still should take regardless of the potential of a rebound. Exactly. Even though this rebound phenomenon might be related to Paxlovid, it's not a reason to forego Paxlovid because we know Paxlovid saves lives. We know for high-risk individuals, this is key to keeping them out of the hospital. So nobody should be dissuaded by hearing about rebound. If they need Paxlovid, they should ask their doctor, ask their pharmacist to prescribe it. All right. And so I want to move now to uh, monkeypox. So while the virus can clearly be spread uh, from any sort of skin-to-skin -skin contact, as we've known from monkeypox just over the years. The New York Times is reporting now that here in the U.S., most of the cases that they have been reporting are coming from sexually intimate contact, including through bodily fluids. So at what point is something considered an STI and how do we avoid stigmatizing who may be more vulnerable to this? For me, monkeypox being a strict STI would be the transmission is occurring not only from skin to skin contact, but also through bodily fluids that are exchanged during sexual contact. And there is some data that that might be occurring, but the predominant way it seems that people are getting infected is skin to skin contact with maybe some strict sexual transmission. Again, this is another research question that needs an answer. And I think that we have to move away from trying to stigmatize infectious diseases, sexually transmitted infections. Uh, that That's never helpful. It makes things much worse. And, and I think that what we have to do is really be clear about the epidemiology and at the same time, not really cast moral aspersions on people for getting infected with this. This is a virus. This is the human species against this virus. I think we have to be unified that way, even if it's only concentrated in one sociodemographic group right now. Right, everyone is still, should still be mindful of it. And that, that being said, cases are not spreading at the moment like COVID did in the early stages of 2020. But also, unlike COVID, monkeypox isn't new. Uh, so there's already a vaccine and there's already treatment. So why why is the outbreak happening now? Did anything change about the virus or any are the circumstances changed? How did we get to this point? I think what's happened is that we have a large uncontrolled outbreak in some of the endemic countries in Africa, like Nigeria. And the virus sort of fortuitously got into a social sexual network of men who have sex with men. 
and really exploited what we call a network effect, meaning that many of these individuals have multiple sexual partners in a short period of time. And that allowed the virus to spread in a way that it hadn't been before. So this is really more about the virus exploiting unusual circumstances to be able to spread the way it has. And the fact was, it was masquerading as a sexually transmitted infection, getting misdiagnosed. So it took some time for people to recognize what was going on. So we've really been playing catch up a lot with this virus. But as you said, this is a virus known to science for which we have a vaccine, for which we, we know its contagiousness, where it's contagious, when it's not. And we've stopped monkeypox outbreaks before. It's just about competently delivering the vaccine. Absolutely. Yeah, that unfortunate confluence of events that happened there. Um, all right. Infectious disease specialist, Dr. Amish Adalja, thank you so much for joining us this weekend. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks for having me.